we're going to be looking at uh, problem solving with vectors. So here's our problem. We're going to read through it twice, gather some important information, and then draw maybe a diagram to help us out. A plane is pointed 40 degrees east. Uh, sorry. A plane is pointed north 40 degrees east and traveling at a speed of 400 kilometers an hour. The wind is traveling uh, south 60 degrees west at a speed of 40 kilometers an hour. What is the new speed of the plane after fighting the wind? It's also known as what is the magnitude of the resultant vector between these two. Um, okay, so let's gather our, our values to help draw our diagram. 40, uh, north 40 degrees east at 400 kilometers, the magnitude and the direction. Uh, here's our direction again and our other magnitude for our vectors. Um, I'm going to draw the Cartesian plane here. Just going to make it a little different. We're going to add some things to it. We're going to call upwards north, um, heading downwards south, heading to the right east, and heading to the left west. On a two-dimensional plan plane, this is usually how we see things. Um, so, fourth north, fourth north, forty degrees east. That means we start north. Okay, so the plane. We'll try to do it right here. It starts pointed north. And it's going to move to the east. Oops, select it. There we go. It's going to move to the east 40 degrees from north. So in other words, actually, it is this angle in here that is 40 degrees. And here's our plane that has a magnitude of 400 kilometers an hour, traveling relatively fast. Um, our wind is pretty much doing the opposite. If we take a look here, uh, we'll get our again. We'll put the wind in. Let's say blue. Um, it is traveling south. Okay, so it's originally south. We're going to select it. It says south and then 60 degrees to the west. So that's heading this way. And the angle from it due south is 60 degrees. Okay. Its magnitude is far less. It's only 40 kilometers an hour. Okay. So the question is then, what is the new speed of the plane after fighting the wind. Well, we're essentially adding two vectors, we call it here. So here's our original vector, and here's our, our second vector, okay? Um, we're gonna redraw them down here. I'll still try to keep the colors the same here. So our plane, doing something like that, magnitude of 400 kilometers an hour. Think of that like almost the distance if we're going to create a triangle, which we are going to do out of this. We then have to add our second vector. So we go to the tip of this vector here and we draw our new vector, our, our wind vector. So it's going to look something like that. Now these are not to scale, obviously. I'm not nearly talented enough to figure that out by freehand. Uh, so that's going 40 kilometers an hour. Okay, so we're adding these two vectors. So our resultant vector put in green. So after the plane has fought off the wind, what is the speed of the plane? In other words, we just want to know the magnitude um, or, if you're looking at a triangle, the distance of this side of the triangle. That's what our question is asking us. Okay. So we have two sides, but in order to use any trigonometric ratios or laws, we need at least three pieces of information. Um, so we have the two sides, that's pretty wonderful, but we got some angles here. So we're going to have to try to deduce at least one angle in here before we can use um, one of the you know, trig laws, probably cosine law, maybe sine law, depending on what we're able to figure out. So let's get a dotted line for north. Okay. So here's our dotted line for north. And if you recall, the angle here to the red one was 40 degrees. Okay. Um, well, let's see if that's helpful to us at all. We can also do the same concept to draw it anywhere else. Where else can we draw that same concept? That also means that using Z principles, okay, that this would also be Z principle, that would also be 40 degrees technically. Okay. Um, the other piece of information that's important to us is heading due south. Ah, here we go. This is where we're gonna get. I'm going to extend this a little. Oops. I'm going to extend our dotted line here. It's essentially just the line heading upwards. Okay. Our, our blue angle, or our wind, if you recall, was at an angle of 60 degrees. Perfect. 
Um, so because that's 60 degrees and this is 40 degrees, to get the angle between um, the wind and the airplane, we subtract the two vectors. So we're going to do 60, subtract 40 degrees, and we're going to come out with a lovely 20 degrees. Okay. So this part of the triangle is at an angle of 20 degrees. Great. I'm going to redraw the triangle. We're going to build it now from here. So we have our first side, second side, and finally our third side. The internal angle here is 20 degrees. Um, this distance or this magnitude is 400, it's technically in kilometers an hour. Okay? And this magnitude here is 40, and technically again in kilometers an hour. So we have two angles in the angle between them. We need to find the opposite side. If you recall, cosine law is what's going to work best for that. Cosine law is our c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Subtract 2 times side a times side b times cos of the angle of c. We need to name this triangle. Well, because this is the unknown, I'm going to call this side C. There's technically many different ways you can write the cosine law. Uh, I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to call C the unknown, just to, to suit our purposes and our formula much better, which then means um, that 20 is our, um, our angle C. So angle C is going to be 20 degrees. So we're going to replace that with 20. Um, I'm then just going to name uh, the other parts of the triangle. We'll call this side A, which makes this angle A. And we're going to call this side B, which makes this angle B. Again, we don't need those angles, but we do need those sides. Um, if you recall, 40 is B, so we're going to replace both of the Bs in our equation with the number 40. And A is 400, so we're going to replace both of the A's in our equation with 400. So now that we have a lot of the info, um, let's replace what we do know. We don't know side C, so that still stays as the letter C squared is equal to 400 squared plus 40 squared minus 2 times 400 times 40 times cos of 20 degrees. Um, so essentially, we're going to plug all of this into a calculator, get a value, and then to isolate c, we're going to square root that value, and that should give us a magnitude or the new speed that your plane is traveling at. Um, so let's jump over to our calculator here. We'll maybe do this in a couple pieces. Uh, we have 400 squared, it's a rather large number, plus uh, 40 squared. Great, did it all in one step for us. So I'm going to say that we did this part all in one there. That is equal to 161,600, 161,600, wonderful, still equals c squared. Subtract the by. Now, it's very common in cosine law to do all of this together, but that's actually not correct um, order of operations. Because this is technically multiplied, all of this should be done first before we get working on our addition or subtraction, because this is all multiplication here. Okay? Um, so I'm going to get the second number here, 2 times 400 times 40. Can we get that quickly? 1,600, 3,200? Let me see if I get my zeros right. So we have 1, 2, 3 zeros. 4 times 4 is 16, times 2 is 32. So 32 times what is cos 20? Don't know. So I'm going to put it in here. Cos of 20. There we go. Mm -hmm. OK, so approximately 0 0.939. Approximately 0 0.939. I'm going to keep that exact answer and multiply it by 32, sorry, not 100,000. Um, so we're going to take our answer from above and multiply it by that 32,000. One, two, three zeros. There we go, and it ends up at 30,070, we're going to say. So it was approximately 30,070. Make sure I wrote that right. Yeah, that looks right. We still have 161,600. Subtract 30,070. Um, let's take those values. What's neat about this calculator is we can kind of copy our and paste our answers all the way through. Oh, did not do that right. Try one more time. Watch as I say that, it doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work, how wonderful. Okay, uh, I'll type it in. Minus our answer from before. All right, that's even more exact. Beautiful. So we get approximately 131,529. 
we'll write it in. It's kind of like an archiving process. That way, if we make a mistake, we're uh, able to see what we had done wrong before. One, one, three, one, five, two, nine, five, two, nine. Okay, we'll go 0 0.8. And then to isolate for C, we need to square root the right side of our equation. So we need to square root this answer. 1, 3, 1, 5, 2, 9, 8. And because our calculator on the other side has such a nice memory function, we are going to take the square root of our answer from above, and it gives us 362.6. So 362.6. Uh, what are the units? If you recall, speed was in kilometers an hour. Okay. So if we scroll back up, this side of the triangle should be 362.6. Um, let's take a look. Does that make sense? Yeah, this side's longer. This side should be shorter than that 400 kilometers. The wind was fighting us, so we should be traveling slower. Technically, we're traveling at a different angle, but the question didn't ask us that, so we're not going to get into that word. Okay. So there's your new magnitude or your new speed of the point.